Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Phil Hall, and I am the Southeast Accounts Manager at Rhino Networks. I want to thank you all for joining us today as we explore the Cisco Secure Portfolio that Rhino Networks has identified as enhancements to your networks. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with Rhino Networks history, uh, we grew out of a MSP based in Asheville, North Carolina, and began working with Meraki prior to Cisco acquisition. Um, after Cisco's acquisition of Meraki, we grew to be one of the top tier two partners with Meraki, and in the last few years have begun identifying the necessary security enhancements Cisco offers to further protect our clients' networks, including the ones we'll be exploring today. Some of you may already have some of these products in your security posturing, but each product does have different levels of security to reach different goals. So at this time, I want to introduce you to our panelists who will be sharing with us today in this discussion. We have Dylan Barton, who is our expert in Secure X and Secure Endpoint, Seth Hernandez, who is our expert in Cisco Umbrella, and Ben Knowles as our Cisco Duo, Duo expert. We also have some specialists in the Q&A um, portion of WebEx, and you can find that in the bottom right hand corner. You might have to click on the three dots just to bring that up. Um, ask any questions there, and we will do our best to answer them in live time, as well as answer some of them uh, verbally at the end of this. So when I think about network security and the products we are going to be discussing today, I think about it from a three layered approach, front, middle, and back. Uh, the front line of security being Cisco Umbrella, the middle line being Meraki Networks, hardware and licensing, and the back line being Cisco Secure Endpoint. Two other products we will be talking about are the integration of all of these and more together with Cisco SecureX and protecting our logins across all layers with Cisco Duo. So thank you again for joining us and enjoy this short video about SecureX to start us off. SecureX is a security platform embedded with every Cisco security product. It's cloud native with no new technology to deploy. SecureX has unifying visibility across your entire security environment, including Cisco and many third-party security products. You can also enable automation with your security workflows. Use your automated security feed to alert your company of potential security threats and have the power of Cisco Talos behind you. Together with unified visibility, analytics, and automated workflows, SecureX can advance the security maturity of any size team, providing more control with less effort. SecureX is the single pane of glass solution that is free with the purchase of any Cisco security product, including a Meraki network. The more solutions integrated with SecureX, the more SecureX is able to identify, isolate, and mitigate any security threat you may face. So Dylan, as we just saw in the video, SecureX can do a lot, um, but what exactly is it? And why did Cisco take the time and resources to develop it? Great questions, Phil. First, I'll cover the why. Our goal building the SecureX platform was to solve the security industry's most pressing challenges and enable better outcomes. And we boiled them down to three needs, simplicity, vis visibility, and efficiency. With simplicity, you want an integrated and open platform that simplifies your current ecosystem and also works with third-party solutions. In terms of visibility, we need visibility to counter attacks and stay compliant. You need answers in one unified view and not isolated alerts in multiple different platforms. And when speaking of efficiency, evolving from manual to automated workflows with a few clicks results in faster remediation with better precision. Every year, we surveyed 2,800 CISOs and IT decision makers worldwide to better understand the following questions. Why has complexity taken over the security industry? What role have we played to create this scenario? And what are your top priorities? So 57% said that time to detect is a critical KPI for most security teams. 81% say that orchestration between products is challenging. And 77% plan to automate more actions in the future. Uh, cool. So now that we know what it is, uh, how exactly does it work? Great question, Phil. So as you saw in the video, 
Um, SecureX is a fully customizable dashboard used to give one single view across your security infrastructure. It reduces threat detection time by having one simple view of what matters most to you, which allows the instance to be noticed quicker. You can also automate routine tasks using pre-built workflows that align to common use cases, or you can build your own that, allow with, that align with your specific business needs. And then we also have threat response. And threat response essentially accelerates investigation by drilling down into specific endpoint targets, which we'll talk about here in the next slide. This dashboard is also works with security products, but as the video mentioned, we also work with third party products as well. So we do use single sign on for a unified experience. And then when it comes to threat response, threat response is a security investigation and in incidents response application. So it simplifies threat hunting and incident response by accelerating detection investigation and remediation of threats. The threat response application provides your security investigation with context and enrichment by connecting your Cisco security product solutions together. With orchestration, we accelerate the time to remediate and automate workflows to lower operational costs. We also reduce human error and improve collaboration. We also have the SecureX ribbon, which allows us to pivot through our different dashboards um, so we never lose context. And another feature that we have is device insights, and this gives us pow powerful information such as what types of devices are connected to our network, what users have been accessing those devices, where the devices are located, different security agents installed on those devices, and then also if our security devices are up to date too. Wow, uh, so that sounds impressive um, as a tool itself, but I'd kind of like to talk about what also is like driving this tool. Um, where does it get all of its information? I'm assuming there is a unifying factor um, here across the security measures that makes them all be able to talk to each other like this. Yes, of course. So we have Cisco Talos, and Cisco Talos is the largest non-government threat intelligence agency on the planet. So we have over 400 full-time threat researchers and data scientists, 5 billion reputation requests, and 2 billion malware samples seen daily. We also see 5 billion category responses and 200 million IPs and URL blocks daily also. So with Talos, we see the most so that we can block the most. And so Talos creates a threat detection content in all of our Cisco security products providing customers with comprehensive protection solutions from cloud to core. It doesn't matter if you have a Meraki MX, a ASA, uh, Cisco Firewall Malware Defense, Cisco Umbrella, Secure Endpoint, any of our cloud solutions. Um, Cisco Talos powers all of these security solutions. Great. Um, so I appreciate you giving us all the details of SecureX and something I want to point out from the video is that SecureX is a free tool that is given to anyone who purchases a Cisco security product, which I think just adds immense value to the projects our clients are faced with. Uh, but to move on uh, to Cisco Umbrella, I, want, I know that Rhino Networks has been working with Cisco Umbrella for a while, and a lot of things have changed since we last hosted an event like this. So to talk about a little bit more, Seth, can you start us off by introducing to us what Umbrella is and what it does? Absolutely. Thanks, Phil. Happy Tuesday, everybody. I am Seth Hernandez. I am your cloud security specialist. I specifically cover Umbrella in the central United States. So on this next slide, uh, from here, you know, first and foremost, with testing any IT tools, um, uh, especially security, uh, Cisco understands, look, you got to really, you know, test the functionality and the efficacy of that tool to really make sure you're, you know, securing your end users. And the big piece where Umbrella really fits in that is, you know, those gaps in visibility. You know, after 2020, the hybrid workforce is pretty much the standard now. If you have some, you know, end users that are back in the office, uh, you definitely probably have a couple outliers that, you know, are still working remotely, uh, possibly even around the country. So Umbrella really mediates that gap in, in visibility as well as, uh, you know, protecting those end users from any potential malware or ransomware attacks, which absolutely run rampant on the internet. So it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when you're going to get hit. So Umbrella really adds that layer of security at the endpoint. So on this next slide, you know, uh, this is this is Cisco Umbrella. So Umbrella is a DNS layer security tool. 
Um, we can go back to that last slide real quick. Appreciate your apologies. No worries, no worries. Uh, so Cisco Umbrella is a DNS layer security tool. It is delivered in the cloud. Uh, so there's no hardware to install, uh, no software to manually update. Uh, so you may have heard Cisco describe it as the easiest and fastest way to protect your end users. So DNS is the first step in all internet connections, uh, as you guys will know. And it is used by any and all devices that utilize the inter internet in any way, shape, or form. So with Umbrella, we're just tying in something you're already doing. Anytime you click on a link, uh, type in your URL for an external site, that request, that request goes to a recursive DNS service, and to, like Umbrella, and it looks at that IP address. And that is the point where Umbrella enforces security to block any domains that are associated with any malware campaigns, phishing, command and control callbacks, or just any requests that you guys deem unacceptable. So it will proactively, uh, you know, block any malicious content as well as, um, you know, block any endpoints or any sites that you guys deem malicious and it'll sever that connection before it's even made. Also, we understand that, uh, you know, some of you guys do have to abide by some compliances. So Umbrella does fit in with some of major compliances, including SOC 2 and uh, GDPR. And if you need, um, any more information on that, you know, feel free to hit the chat or reach out to me directly. So sounds like a lot. So we can jump into the next slide and talk a little bit more about the features. So Umbrella does offer a layered, uh, a robust, robust set of layered security capabilities um, with the best efficacy in the business. So we do have that DNS layer security where you get that constant filtering, as well as the uh, secure web gateway where you get some of those tenant controls as well as URL filtering the cloud over firewall and the cloud access security broker or the Casby service where you get uh, more granularity on the apps that your end users are using as well as controlling those applications that they're allowed to use. With the uh, interactive threat intelligence and uh, remote browser isolation, uh, those are a little bit newer. We've added these in the last few years, including data loss prevention, which um, you know reduces that risk of any data exfiltration or just generally defends against uh, any losses of any sensitive information. Uh, on the endpoint, as well as our cloud malware detection, which use, utilizes a lightweight version of our secure endpoint tool, which we'll be talking about today, that does the initial file scan of any files downloaded over a web browser or application. So I know it sounds like a lot, but we can dive into a couple more of the capabilities here on this next slide. Awesome. So, you know, with that visibility, you know, Umbrella offers, you know, visibility into all internet and web traffic, whether the users are on or off the VPN, you know, in a coffee shop, in the airport, no matter where they are, you get that visibility into where they're going and all their DNS requests. As well as you get that control back. Uh, you know, like I was mentioning, you're able to control what sites your end users are going to, what applications they're using. We all have, you know, I've seen it a million times. Everyone has those end users that are using streaming devices tying down your bandwidth. You're able to block that out so no one can stream uh, besides maybe Spotify just to keep them happy. Um, as well as you get that protection. So, you know, from any external threat that is potentially unknown, uh, we get that threat intel from our Talos team, which blocks about 20 million threats a day. So uh, you can be sure to be safe with uh, uh, Cisco Talos uh, back in our information. Awesome. Well, Seth, thank you for the crash course. And I know I have more questions to ask you and I see some coming in on our chat as well. Um, there is a separate box where it's a Q&A portion where it allows our Q&A panelists to be able to um, answer those more directly. But just kind of jump into a little bit more about those on the call that have Meraki networks and even deploy the advanced security or SD-WAN licensing, which seems to have some overlap with Umbrella. How is Umbrella different or even how does it integrate with the current Meraki dashboards our listeners are working with today? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, with that, Integration with Meraki, yes. If you have, if you're utilizing advanced security licensing, there is some overlap there. You know, especially with the IDS and uh, IPS, as well as the constant filtering feature, it looks very similar. Uh, where Umbrella really shines is that SSL decryption, uh, which needs to be done in a cloud environment, not to tie down your band bandwidth on your network, as well as that uh, you know file type control, um, as well as URL filtering and uh, that data loss prevention piece, but. The piece where Umbrella really shines with Meraki is that roaming client agent. We're able to, whatever policies you set um, on your network, you're able to do that, you know, wherever the user may be. Um, and that integration is pretty seamless. You know, I've seen, there's a couple different ways to do it, uh, depending on the uh, package of Umbrella that you're looking at. Uh, but I've seen customers do it in just about an hour or so. 
all you need to do is grab that API key from your umbrella dashboard and you integrate it directly onto your Meraki dashboard, there should be a piece where it says cloud on-ramp and you throw that API key in there and what, whatever umbrella policies you set forth, uh, you can push that out uh, on your Meraki dashboard per SSID or per Meraki user group. So very straightforward, very easy. Awesome. Um, so I'm sure there's some competition out there with Cisco Umbrella, um, but what makes Cisco Umbrella different or even scalable depending on our customers' needs? And dare I say, what makes Umbrella better? <laughs> well, I'm a little biased. I do think Umbrella is the best, but uh, as far as where I think it really shines is Cisco's big emphasis is just, we understand you have a plethora of security tools we want to make sure everything's working together. And I think Umbrella's integration with multiple pieces of your security stack, offering you that visibility and the ability to track a an incident from run to hold to another, and, a, uh, and the ability to you know re reduce that time of remediation is huge. And as far as the stats and where Umbrella lies with our competition, you know, like I said, I'm a little biased, but I can let the facts speak for Excel. Uh, AB Test is a completely independent European firm uh, they do rigorous tests on multiple pieces of cybersecurity, and with uh, DNS tools, they grabbed about seven different ones, including our big, bigger competitors with Zscaler and Palo Alto, which you know some people may uh, be familiar with. And as you can see, um, this is as of 2021. There is a 22 uh, model, but in the last, I would say, four years, Umbrella has tested number one in the in this test environment. I'm finding the most malicious destinations and the most uh, phishing links. But the piece that you know. Cisco is really proud of is uh, we're also number one in the least amount of false positives. So don't want to give you guys a headache unless it's ne uh, needed, I guess you can say, but uh, absolutely. And Umbrella stands number one again and again. Awesome. So, you know, you guys may have been asking yourself like, hey, you know, how is this license? How is the package? It is licensed per user. Uh, well, there's four different packages of Umbrella. Now, if you want to think of SIG Advantage is that uh, that entire suite of features, uh, that I you know showed earlier, um, as well as the layer seven firewall add-on and the DLP. And then as you go down, you know some of those features do drop off. That if you find something that fits best for you guys, or maybe overkill for you, uh, with our DNS security advantage package, you do get that selective web proxy that does proxy out some of those gray area domains. You know, as you all know, um, domains are made every day. So if something has a low score, but not really need to block it, don't really know, we send it back in a full proxy environment to keep your end users safe as well as including that investigate console that gives you that, you know, SOC 2 intelligence on a, a particular domain to show you their history of any, uh, you know, issues they've had or, you know, potential malware campaigns that they hosted. But any one of these packages can be trialed um, and it's easy to get spun up for you guys to test in your environment. Awesome. Thank you, Seth. I'm sure we'll have more questions for you here in a little bit. Um, but I want to move our discussion to the back end of that security. Uh, we talked about Umbrella being the front line. A lot of you are familiar with Meraki being that midline. But as far as the back end security um, that I was referring to, uh, come secure endpoint. And so, Dylan, we turn to you again to ask the question of why do we need secure endpoint? Like, what does it do and what makes it different? Um, because if I'm not mistaken, this is basically an antivirus solution, right? Or am I getting that wrong? Thanks, Phil. Yeah, so this is this product is way, way more than an antivirus solution. Um, if we go to the next slide, I'm going to kind of tell you why we need, why it's important to need an uh, endpoint security appliance or device. So essentially, um, the endpoint is your last line of defense, right? Endpoints are one of the most commonly attacked targets, and this is because most attacks are destined for some kind of endpoint because it could be you know, a device someone uses, it could be a server with a credit card database or a user database. And they also are going after the activity of the user. So we still have, you know, users in 2022 who will receive an email and, you know, click a link and start entering credentials. And so that's why it's very important to secure these devices. So before I get into kind of the meat of it, um, I want to talk about some acronyms such as uh, EP EPP, which is Endpoint Protection Platform, EDR, so it's Endpoint Detection and Response, and XDR, Extended Detection Response. Um, antivirus, so the Endpoint Protection Platform is kind of a evolved antivirus solution portion, right? But these days, just the Endpoint Protection Platform is not enough. So when we're talking about Endpoint Protection Platform, essentially um, integrated solution 
uh, designed to detect and block threats at device level. So when we're doing this, we're doing behavioral protection and machine learning techniques, uh, blocking fileless malware and ransomware protection. Um, we also prevent the most common attacks before they compromise your system. So that's kind of where endpoint protection platform shines. So with that, we also need an endpoint detection and response platform as well. And so this is a, a cybersecurity system that combines elements of next-gen antivirus with additional tools to provide real-time anomaly detection and alerting, forensic analysis, and endpoint remediation capabilities. So here, we're going to be reducing dwell time to remediate and uh, minimize impact faster. We can query uh, the endpoint with uh, questions and get answers in real time with our orbital search engine. We also can uh, quickly detect and respond to threats once compromised. So on the face of it, uh, the distinction between EPP and EDR is relatively straightforward. EPP is a first line defense mechanism effective at blocking known threats. And EDR is the next layer of security, providing additional tools for threat hunting, forensic analysis, intrusion, and respond quickly to threats. And XDR compromises more than just your endpoints. It combines other products such as network devices, email appliances, for a holistic view of what's going on in your network. And so right here, we can see that uh, we have Cisco Secure Endpoint, we have Cisco Secure Firewall, Meraki MXs. So uh, using our XDR technology, um, if we see a threat come in on any one of these devices, um, we can block it automatically across all of these devices. Cool. Um, so I would say I feel like I kind of understand XDR now, but uh, how does that keep our endpoints truly secure? Like, does it require anything else to function in the most secure way? And does it really protect everything? Um, how does Cisco, again, kind of shine above the rest? Yeah, so uh, really it comes back to Talos, right? Talos is powering all of our security products, and it's taking information from all of the security products across uh, everyone's platform that's using SecureX, right? So in a perfect world, uh, blocking 100% of attacks is ideal. Um, however, that's just not reality and it's impossible. So Secure Endpoint will block a vast majority of attacks coming onto your system. Um, however, for something like a zero day or something never seen before, that's where you'll need an EDR solution that can respond accordingly if you are impacted. So with continuous analysis and re retrospective security, we can identify a threat point of origin, see what it's been up to and where it's been. This allows us to remediate and, minim and minimize impact faster. And so these are kind of the, you know, what we're looking at when we're talking about secure endpoints, we're looking at protection, detection and response. So for protection, you know, we have some features here like machine learning, behavioral analytics, uh, posturing, and attack service reduction, signature-based detection as well. So when it comes to detection, this is going to be, you know, cloud indications of compromise, uh, vulnerability, and low prevalence software identification. Um, we can also extend XDR with our secure platform here, um, advanced endpoint search, and sandboxing. And then when it comes to response, uh, this is where we have some custom blocker allow list, um, application control, and this is kind of where the XDR Secure X, X platform really shines. But we also have endpoint isolation too, which will kind of um, contain if a if you have a host or a device that uh, has some type of malware or something suspicious going on, we could kind of immediately with a couple clicks contain that device um, to secure it and not let it affect the rest of your environment. Awesome. Um... So what I'm hearing is that Cisco has taken, you know, our boring, clunky, antiquated AV solutions and made it a different solution, providing the power of Talos and in real time responding to threats. So if this sounds right, is there a tiered approach to this like there was with Umbrella? Yeah, exactly. So we do have a tiered approach too. Um, we have our Essentials Advantage and Premier licensing, and we have recently just introduced Secure Endpoint Pro which provides managed endpoint detection response as a service, right? So we're able to add the Secure Endpoint Pro to our Premier and Advantage licensing as of now. Awesome. Thank you, Dylan. I know that most people consider just the antivirus solution uh, can't be fun to talk about, but it sounds like a little bit more than antivirus, and I'm excited to be on some of the discovery calls 
uh, with my clients and your engineers um, to explore the solution in some of their environments. Um, but now, on to a topic that I have kind of been waiting for um, because two-factor authentication, multi-factor authentication, access control, single sign-on, zero trust are all terms that I'm hearing a lot about. And I'm sure some of you are too. So brings me to Cisco Duo and Ben Knowles. So Ben, turning to you, what is Cisco Duo and how does it relate to the buzzwords most of us are too familiar with? And since many companies don't have MFA in place today, isn't it kind of a heavy lift for small IT teams and uh, users unfamiliar with MFA? Well, thanks for having me, Phil. Um, yeah, so Duo in a nutshell is the easiest and most secure MFA and trusted, continuous trusted access solution on the market. Uh, as far as buzzwords, uh, ones that spring to mind, you kind of already mentioned uh, zero trust, BYOD, behavior analytics, UEBA, passwordless, single sign-on. Um, in reality, you know, Duo's more and way more than just MFA. Uh, with the buzzwords I just mentioned, Duo's excelling in, we're able to help companies uh, achieve any goals that you might have related to them. Uh, lastly, we're, we're absolutely not a heavy lift. Uh, I've had customers, for example, in the healthcare space, deployed over 3,000 users in a matter of a couple of days. Uh, most of my SMB and mid-market customers are able to deploy and stand up Duo with the many integrations that we have in a matter of hours. Uh, we actually enable our customers with extensive documentation and uh, top-level support in a way that's um, you know, able to help them integrate and you know, really meet their goals. Unlike a lot of MFA, Duo doesn't have any maintenance fees, simply because maintaining and standing up Duo isn't a heavy lift and is simple even for the, the smallest IT teams. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Ben. Uh, so about zero trust, what does it really take to establish a zero trust environment? And what does that even mean? And what about users who don't necessarily want the Duo mobile app or to use their personal phone? Yeah, it's a great question. So, you know, Duo strives to make zero trust, you can see here, um, and the adoption of zero trust as simple as possible, while understanding that zero trust is not just a one size fits all, and some need time just to gradually move into it, whereas others prefer the big bang approach all at once. So, it's kind of explains zero trust starts with strong MFA, you verify the user is who they say they are, that's the first step. Next is making sure the device they're using is not a potential risk, the browser being able to date, for example, um, the endpoint itself not being healthy. And then next is making sure that you're ensuring the app they're accessing is the one they should be from a device that the organization allows them to access from. So Duo helps you achieve all of this in a way that's simple for IT teams and end users alike. Um, you, know, you kind of mentioned as well as far as you know, users that don't want to use the mobile app. Most of my users do prefer to use the mobile app. It is the easiest uh, push notification, easiest to use, easiest to adopt. But we do offer many forms, as you saw on the last slide, uh, including phone callback, uh, cell to office phones, cell phones, for example, SMS authentication, hardware tokens. And now we've moved into the passwordless authentication phase as well. Um, so yeah, definitely many ways that our users can, can authenticate if they prefer not the, uh, the app. Okay. Um, so now that we know what Cisco Duo can do, uh, my next question would be like, what does it cover? Is it just for signing into like Cisco applications and systems or does it do more than that? And why would someone choose Duo over some of the others in the marketplace? Um, especially when Azure and other ones, uh, include it for free, even Office 365. Yeah, Phil, that's the, uh, elephant in the room. So I appreciate you asking that question for sure. Um, but basically. As you can see from this slide here, what we secure and what we protect and how easily we do it is a huge reason as to why my customers choose Duo over, again, Elephant in the Room, potentially seemingly free MFA that might be out in the market. Uh, Duo covers the widest range of apps on the market, anything speaking SAML, Radius, LDAP, web applications, and more, not just Cisco products. Uh, some out there are good at securing you know, their own products like email, but when a need comes to ensure all potential areas of breaches and remote access are secure, that's where Duo comes in. And for other solutions that you know, potentially can be just not possible, and Duo is just that one-stop shop. As we're you know, gonna discuss in a little bit too, some of the compliance that's rolling out there too, 
requires more than just email or more than just VPN to be protected. It's all encompassing, and that's what Duo is in a way that gives those users that that one stop shop. Cool. Um, so it's not the same as like the integrated MFA for different products. And I'm assuming that this helps the end user by being able to have that one MFA solution for all their applications. Um, so how easy is this to deploy and how does this fulfill things like the FTC requirements coming to many industries in the beginning of December or even fulfill any cyber liability requirements from insurance companies? Yeah, great question. You know, as mentioned before, we're extremely easy, extremely simple to deploy. Um, you know, the best way to see this is to try it for yourselves, a uh, free 30 day trial, which we'll talk about. Um, anyone needing help, uh, pre sales engineering help is, is second to none. Um, and our post sales duo care team that offers services to help with setup and deployment is also absolutely fantastic too. Uh, as far as FTC safeguard regulations, like you mentioned, Phil, that's a huge buzzword right now with a deadline coming in December. Um, anyone that doesn't know, um, by that first week of December, any company that handles sensitive customer information has to have MFA for all access to that data. You know, people are turning to Duo for this because we're the best solution, solution, as I mentioned, to protect all access, whether email, VPN, remote desktop, absolutely anything, just to name a few. And similar, again, to cyber liability insurance requirements where most insurance companies now you know, won't even renew policies. Uh, they'll, they'll triple premiums or even worse, quadruple or more. You know, some MFA can secure a piece of those requirements, like email, like I mentioned, but with Duo, we're the only place to go that's gonna be able to protect everything while also being simple to stand up for small IT teams. And it's easy to use for your end users as well. It's not gonna be a, a huge heavy lift. Awesome. Thanks for the explanation and insight on that, Ben. Um... And brings me to this question, are there different levels to duo that we should necessarily consider? Yeah, great question. And again, we, we are at uh, you know, different levels tiered approach here with duo. So uh, three different editions, these are you know, all online, uh, all you know, list price listed here. Uh, and again, if you want some more information, you know, contact myself, your Rhino rep, uh, but basically you know, do MFA access and beyond. Uh, MFA is your basic MFA stand up for any application. We are strictly a user based model. So uh, you can have 10, 20, 30 applications or more protected for each user. Uh, Duo Access takes it that one step further and says, let's make sure that device is healthy. It's uh, you know, not out of date, not unhealthy in that, that kind of sense. And then also Duo Beyond is a full encompassing of uh, a zero trust model as well. So. Again, if you want some more information on that, make sure to reach out. We have our trial sign up page down at the bottom too, and you know, we'd love to help. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. The overview has been great. Um, I'm gonna turn everyone's attention to the screen again. Um, you will see the prizes that you've all been entered in for a chance today. Uh, just for attending, some of you get a bonus one for asking those questions prior, which we're gonna get to here in a moment. Um, but there is also a surprise grand prize um, that we're looking to offer you today. For those of you who sign up for a trial by Friday, via the link on the next page regarding any of these security measures we've talked about, you will have to deploy a healthy trial to be entered and the winner will receive a thousand dollar credit towards your security purchase. Uh, we want this to be something that you guys, uh, start putting into your environment just because it's going to protect your company. It's going to protect your assets. It's going to allow you to put your company in a really safe and secure um, position. So we will be following up this event with a recording of this time today, as well as the winners of the immediate raffle. And this will be going out via email as well as uh, found on our social media pages. But moving into our Q and A portion of the event today, and I wanna leave this uh, screen up here so you can get that URL link down. Um, but, there's a few that I grabbed from the ones that were gathered before the event today that I just kind of want to start this up going with. But um, we're going to turn to you, Seth, first. Uh, and this is from Paul K. So the question is, if you're not utilizing on-premise infrastructure anywhere in your environment and you're utilizing like Azure AD, Office 365, and cloud-based file services, why should we use VPNs? And couldn't the same thing be accomplished with secure DNS solutions? Gotcha. Well, uh, appreciate Phil K uh, for the question. So, 
And uh, yeah, so I would say first and foremost, in a perfect world, uh, you know, both have uh, VPN versus Umbrella have uh, great benefits for you on uh, your security stack. I would not say Umbrella completely replaces a VPN where, you know, a VPN does, you know, encrypt some of that traffic as well as, uh, you know, some of that um, visibility into that tunnel. Umbrella does do the same with that roaming client agent, but does not completely replace it. Also, I would say if you are, you know, accessing any applications with any potential sensitive data, uh, you know, using something uh, like a VPN that's able to uh, confirm the identity of that end user that is accessing that data through that tunnel, something like Duo Access Gateway um, is very crucial. So, um, and I would also mention that Umbrella uh, is made to work with multiple VPNs. We do have a modular profile with that roaming client agent. So if you are using something that is not Cisco, we are able to uh, work with that as well. So I would say both have great benefits in a perfect world. It does not completely replace it. But if, uh, if you're not accessing anything too sensitive, uh, then Umbrella is able to help. But, um, you know, a VPN is recommended as there's, you know, more nets for, um, on your security stack or better. So you would say pushing someone towards something like AnyConnect plus the roaming agent will help them fully secure their, uh, you know, interaction with those cloud apps. Is that right? And and then obviously with multi-factor authentication with Duo in there as well and secure endpoint, like the full package really gives you that full security. Exactly, exactly. And a piece I will, a little tidbit, I will say um, with any umbrella licensing, that roaming client agent does come with the client piece of AnyConnect. So you already have, uh, about 50% of that licensing down, you will just have to grab another piece of it. And exactly what you said, Phil, AnyConnect, Umbrella, and Duo, you're able to confirm the identity uh, to those secure uh, apps, as well as, you know, getting encrypting that uh, visibility across, you know, your IP and everything uh, from that end user to that server. Awesome. Um, so the next question we'll jump into, uh, Dylan, this one is from Joe K. Uh, he asked, what are some strategies for risk mitigation where employees might potentially expose company networks to malware by using their personal devices both on and off premise? Gotcha. Yeah, Joe, that's a that's a very good question. So um, we can install Umbrella and a secure endpoint on you know tablets, mobile devices, and laptops. Um, and this will provide some pretty great protection when it comes to uh, umbrella, you know, I, I don't know if users are necessarily going to be okay with you installing that or not. Um, secure endpoint uh, should be, you know, fine for, for most users. Um, however, we do have a separate solution called Cisco Identity Service Engine, which uh, utilizes 802.1x and it protects the internal network from potential threats inside. So um, it does specifically address, you know, the, the whole uh, bring your own device uh, you know, situation. All right. Um, and then Ben, we've got a few for you just to give you a heads up. Uh, but we'll start with this one. Um, first one is from Brian S who asked, do you think that using a biometric security device or thumbprint reader is a good idea in a smaller medical facility like chiropractor's office where a small staff is resistant to complex passwords that regularly need to be changed to keep up with HIPAA compliance. Yeah, it's a great question. I kind of alluded to the healthcare use cases that we have when I was uh, speaking earlier, but um, you know, one of the comments that I've had from a healthcare customer before is we are the solution that, that physicians hate the least, which I find as a resounding um compliment um we do allow for obviously the biometrics which is you know a lot more seamless for many uh as well as uh with apple watches just the one touch and if you need to you can just hit it with your nose if you don't want to have to uh you know um you know you go ahead and uh you know uh, get the uh, your hands again to um you know disinfect so many different ways that we can do that uh, and again i think biometrics uh you know, those, those uh, Apple watches as well are, are a great way to help with that kind of use case. Awesome. And, you know, someone from uh, the event today will likely go away with either an Apple watch or one of the other smart devices. So that might be a great way to use it. Um, another question uh, is from Caleb M. How do we better enforce users to use multi-factor authentication? 
Yeah, that's a great question too. So um, I would say that the adoption rate with Duo is second to none in the market. And you know, the best way to get users to adopt MFA is with something that's extremely simple like Duo is. Uh, we have some great end user communication to roll out and you know really show users that that it is simple to use um you know that's uh you know proof is in the pudding there so i would say you know start up a trial of duo see just how easy it is uh, we we have some more information on our website as far as that end user communication um but reiterating the fact that you know the, the world is moving to a remote and has moved to a remote use case and those those end users you know, need to be protected, whether it's just their own um, data that's being protected, but the you know, wider companies too. So it's, it's, it's extremely important. And we just want to make sure it's as easy for the end user as possible, as well as the IT teams as well. Awesome. And this one came in during the Q&A, um, during our event. This one's for Ben as well. It comes from Andrew. Uh, what benefits does Duo offer over Microsoft Authenticator. I know when I have conversations with my clients a lot is, you know, Microsoft offers that MFA in there and it connects to, to other third party, but I want you to speak on it yourself and tell us, you know, kind of what, what are the big differences, right? What are the things that should make someone want to look at Duo over Microsoft Authenticator? Yeah, and it's come up in a couple of questions uh, just now. Is that ease of use? You know, being the easiest to use, the easiest to deploy solution, uh, there's nobody on the market that beats Duo there, um, as well as the application coverage. That is a huge piece. And the slide that I showed earlier with just an example of some of the apps we cover, you know, some of the, you know, the Azure might, you know, um, MFA, for example, can be good at securing email, for example, but FTC, cyber liability insurance, all the potential attack vectors that are out there need to be protected, not just one. And Duo does that in a way that's extremely simple. Our integrations are seamless and our named integrations are huge as well. So uh, yeah, ease of use, ease to deploy, ease to roll out and all encompassing applications is, is really where Duo excels there. Cool. And Dylan, I'm gonna bring this one back to you. I saw it in our chat or in the Q and A um, and it was answered, but I'd like to hear, let everyone else hear it if they're not watching that. Um, the specific question from Jose was, is Cisco Secure Endpoint equally supported on Windows and Mac? And I'd actually like to take it a little bit further. What is it supported on? What can you install Secure Endpoint to, right? So what devices can we protect? Yeah, so uh, Windows, Mac, um, Android, iOS devices, and certain flavors of Linux devices as well. Awesome. And can you install it on servers too? Because I know some customers still have, you know, hardware sitting on site, on prem. They haven't moved to the cloud yet and they want to secure that as well. Um, is it something that Secure Endpoint can be installed on? Yep. Perfect. Sure All right. Um, I'm just rolling through a couple more. Uh, there are a lot of great questions out there, and I know our panelists who have been answering those have been able to um, get to most of them. Um, so at this point in time, one more might just be coming in. Um, I don't know if we can answer this, but I'm going to throw it out to one of you three. We might have to get to some of these questions uh, after the fact and email all the people who've asked them. Um, but do one of you know if uh, you have Meraki with an MX security device and you wanted to use SecureX, um, it's saying it looks, the question is, it looks like you need a new administrator account. And since uh, SecureX, since I, the question is, since I added SecureX, it only can be activated for new users. Is there a way around this um, to be able to add it to existing users? Yeah, so I'm not sure entirely what that question is asking. Um, however, we do have uh, different dashboard views, so you can create like custom dashboards for, let's just say uh, SecOps or DevOps, or for example, um, you can create different views of kind of what matters most to that, to that specific group. Um, I'm not sure if that if that answers that question or not, uh, but it, if not, we can address it after. All right, 
Perfect. Yeah. And and like I said, some of these questions we might need to just, you know, huddle back on and get the answers out to you uh, afterwards. Um, yeah. So I want to thank the panelists again uh, for being here. I think all the other questions that we have coming in and the ones that we've received prior to um, the event today, we will be getting those answers out to you. We have your email addresses. We'll send them out directly. If you have any other ones, um, again, you can sign up for this free trial dot rhino networks dot com. Fill out that form, and someone from Rhino Networks will be in touch with you to help you uh, answer any further questions, start those trials, and just a reminder again to look out for that recording of today, as well as the announcement of today's winners of our raffle. Um, we thank everyone for being here, and unless someone else wants to jump in, I want to um, let you all have about ten minutes back of your day. And uh, I know that's always important. Time management is something that uh, I'm not the best at, but uh, we tried our hardest today to respect your all's time and we thank you for being here.